Thank you. Okay, captive breeding uh, is being increasingly used for endangered species conservation programs. One of the problems with this is because they're often small isolated populations that are being bred from, you end up with genetic negative genetic consequences. Loss of genetic diversity, increasing in inbreeding, uh, and genetic adaptation to captivity. So managers employ um, ways to minimise these problems by looking at selective mating of individuals in captivity. Now, this diagram here looks all very nice and neat. You do this, it minimises this, you try to fix that. In reality, uh, it looks like this. Red lines are negative effects, blue lines are positive effects, and so the management actions, the link between those and the outcomes you're looking for are complex and not necessarily going in the directions that you want. And because we have this imperfect matching between what managers are doing and what's coming out the other end, there have been suggestions to try and improve uh, this genetic management in captivity uh, that we actually move away, in some cases, from selective mating to bringing back mate choice. The females can actually choose what males they want to mate with in captivity. Uh, and these ideas have been based on genetic advantages based on the theory of sexual selection. So we looked at this, what exactly do you see here? And there are a whole bunch of models or modes of sexual selection and how these are linked to the outcomes are pretty much just as complex as the uh, current genetic management strategies. And you might think, well, that's fine, let's try this. Um, but we also need to realise that this, what's being suggested, is not there to replace what is currently being done, it is there to overlie what is currently being done. So we end up with this big bloody mess. So people are saying that we should be doing things here and trying to predict what's going to come out here. And if anyone in this room can confidently predict by following all those little blue and red lines and how they interact between the left and the right-hand side of the board, you're a better person than I am. So when people do studies on fish in a tank, in a lab, and they write things like this, Sexual selection may therefore, under certain circumstances, be beneficial over enforced monogamy during captive breeding. They are hiding the key question in plain sight. And the key question is, what are those circumstances which are never brought to the front? And that's pretty much what our paper was saying in about 8,000 words, and I've said it all in three minutes. Thank you. <coughs>